The Prophet said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah, and Talha fil Jannah. Talha made a pact with Allah and he was truthful to that and Allah kept his side of the bargain and he is one of the people of Jannah. He went on a journey to Basra and he had some lands in Basra and he was doing some tijada in Basra and he came upon a rahib, a monk. And the monk mentioned to him that a man would come from amongst them and that he would be the Nabi of Allah and that his time is close and that he will take refuge in a place which is identified as having Harra, volcanic area that is in that area, date palms. And my little son or you young man, do not let others beat you to him, meaning don't let them overtake you to accepting him, he is a truthful messenger. So Talha ibn Ubaidillah says, as crucial as the business deals were, and as much as I wanted to make money, I decided to gather my camels and to start going back to Mecca. When he arrived in Mecca and he met his family, he asked them a question, has something big happened in Mecca whilst I was away? They told him, yes, that Muhammad ibn Abdullah has turned away from the religion of his forefathers. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is now claiming to be a person whom revelation comes to. And he says, you should worship your creator alone and forget about all these idols. And of course, every single person in Mecca is speaking about him. The people know him as the trustworthy, the truthful. And everybody's saying, Muhammad proclaims to be a prophet. When I heard about it, I said to myself, I'm not going to leave the religion of my forefathers. He can predict, he can say whatever he wants. Some days after that, someone was knocking at his door. Who's there? It has to be only one man. You would always see him going from home to home, running from person to person, making list of those people who can understand the message. Always thinking of those who can embrace this message of Islam, who are looking for the truth and that is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu and here Abu Bakr is knocking at his door Talha I would like to talk to you for a few minutes he welcomed him sat with him for some time and Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu started conveying the message of Islam talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about a need for having a messenger of Allah about a need of getting the instructions of how to live from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of getting it from anyone else. It was so convincing that before Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu left the house, Talha had decided that he would like to go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and take the shahada. And so he did. And he became Muslim. who embraced Islam at his young age. And at that age, one of the wealthiest people in Makkah Mukarramah. And known to be a very generous person. And a person who was known to be, in the days of Jahiliyyah, was known to be a self-sufficient person who would always be working, doing a hard work, and everything he would do it for himself. And everyone would know that this person is totally independent. And whatever he says, he does it and he gets it. Many of the people say that the first people to accept Islam were the people who were poor and they had no status. This is incorrect. In fact, the first 20 something people that accepted Islam, they were amongst the wealthiest and noblest people of Mecca. These were the cream of Mecca that accepted Islam. And Talha was one of them. 
So of course Talha, when he accepted Islam, he met with what other companions also met with. Because taking the shahada, believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the greatest crime in that land. He told his people that he had accepted Islam. No sooner had they heard that he accepted Islam than they tried to harm him. In fact, his own mother, her name was as Sa'bah bint al-Hadrami. She was a very difficult woman. She was hoping that Talha would be from amongst the leaders of Quraysh because he was intelligent and he was wealthy at a young age. So she had a lot of hope. But when he accepted Islam, she was so angry and so upset that she began not only to swear him and to use abusive words against him, but she told others to beat him up. So from amongst them was Nawfal ibn Khuwaylid. He troubled Talha ibn Ubaidillah and a few of the early Muslims a lot, beating him and telling him that you'd better leave the religion of Muhammad. How dare you follow this faith? But he was so strong. He had heard in Busra what the monk had to say, and he kept on uh, sticking to his beliefs and they kept on harming him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een to immigrate to Medina Munawwara, Talha radiallahu anhu was one of the last people because he wanted to remain in Makkah Mukarramah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, he migrated only after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when it comes to Talha, Talha has some very important instances in his life. The first instance is the battles that Talha participated in. Talha didn't participate in the Battle of Badr. Why? Even though he was from the Sabiqeen al awwali But he didn't participate in the Battle of Badr because the Prophet sent him on an errand. He says that he was sent to bring news of the caravan of Abu Sufyan. And so they pursued the caravan until it arrived in Mecca. By the time they returned, the battle was already over. And for this, Talha really reprimanded himself. That he didn't get the opportunity to be with the Prophet in the first battle. And the battle of Badr was something very big. Anybody who participated in the battle of Badr was the best of the companions. The very best. He wants to be among the best. He's missed the opportunity for the battle of Badr. So the battle of Uhud he doesn't want to miss. So this is one of the greatest of the companions in the battle of Uhud. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr says, whenever the battle of Uhud was mentioned, this is the day of Talha. So what did Talha do? When the Muslims, some of the Muslims, they left their positions and dropped their weapons and ran after the, the war booty. And the Muslims, as a result of that, then were in a state of disarray. Because the Mushrikeen from, came from the other side on cavalry. Many of the Muslims were then caught up in the middle there was some confusion, many people were killed. There was hue and cry that the Prophet was being killed. He became a mess. Talha, in this time, came to the Prophet ﷺ, who was surrounded. The mushrikeen had hurt the Prophet. ﷺ. The Prophet was bleeding. And they had surrounded him. And they had begun to fire arrows at him. And the Prophet is in a dire situation. He's in a difficult situation. He's fallen into a ditch. Talha comes to come and defend the Prophet. Every time the Prophet calls out, Who is going to defend me? Talha is there. May your Messenger of Allah, with one hand, is lifting the Prophet out of the ditch, with the other hand, he's fighting off the mushrikeen. 
When they fire their arrows, he's putting himself in the way, blocking their arrows. Eleven of the Ansar are with him. Each one of them is dispatched, one by one. Allah has the defender of the Prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam wanted to go in one of the caves in the, in the mountain of Uhud. That cave was high and there was a big rock to climb before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam can, can get into the cave. As soon as Talha radiallahu anhu saw the situation, he sat down, he said, Ya Rasulullah, climb my back and get into the cave. What about you, Talha? How are you going to get in there? Don't worry about me, Ya Rasulullah. Just climb my back and get in there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. Now his tooth are broken. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's cheek is bleeding badly. And at that time, forgetting all of his pains, he's sinning. As soon as he got into the cave, the first word Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was, Awjaba Talha. Today, Talha got the guarantee of the Jannah. So much so that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrahi radiallahu anhu, they happened to rush towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they saw him in blood. And they asked him, O oh Messenger, are you okay? He said, don't worry about me. Go and see your companion Talha ibn Ubaidillah. He was laying on the floor in a pool of blood with so many gashes that he had. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and a lesson to learn from this. You know, when they counted, they said over 70 wounds Talha received. They used to say that Talha's hand after that became partially disabled because of the wounds. This is Talha. Brothers and sisters, it's not easy to be among the 10 who are given glad tidings of Jannah. After this battle, every single battle the Prophet fought, Talha was with him. He fought all of the battles with the Prophet. We would have said now that he, his hand is disabled, that now he has some excuse. But for them, they look for excuses to participate with the Prophet. One day, Talha went to his home. His wife looked at him and asked him, you look too sad today. Is there anything hurting you? What's troubling you? It's only one thing that's troubling me. What is that? I have gathered so much wealth. Now I'm worried. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question me about all of it on the day of judgment? What I'm going to say? who right away without giving it a second thought she said why don't you spend it in the path of Allah we don't need none of that I don't need nothing my needs are fulfilled why don't you spend all of that in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I have no needs Allah is feeding us we having we are having all the comfort of the life I don't need anything more go out and give everything out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that was only my worry that was the only worry that I had that what situation I would face at my home I did not want to have a difficult situation at home therefore I came to talk to you now since I have heard it from your mouth as soon as he heard it he went out he gave everything out but subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is always there Whatever you get, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that I swear by God, whenever a sadaqah is given out of wealth, that wealth never reduces, it always increases. In no days, in few days, again he started having so much. And this is why he was known as Talhatul Khayr, who is always good. Whenever he sees someone, he wants to give something. He always wants to give out his wealth. And always, whenever he meets someone, there is someone that's something that he carries with him. Here, I have something for you. Talhatul Khayr. He had some land and he sold the land. And after he sold the land, what did he do? He bought some camels and he ordered them to be slaughtered and he fed all the people. He's a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He will be my neighbor in the Jannah. Whenever he's in a gathering, people will know that we'll receive something good from this man. One day, an ayah of Quran al-Kareem was revealed. 
The ayah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, out of the believers, there are some men who are fulfilling their promises with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're holding up to their covenant that they made with Allah. Some of them have fulfilled their promise and some of them are waiting. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were afraid to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, who are these people about whom Allah says that they are still alive? But they were afraid to ask. Once a villager came to Medina Munawwara, they said to that villager, why don't you ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about this ayah? And who are those people? He did not reply. He asked again. And he asked for the third time. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not reply. So Sahaba knew he doesn't want to tell no names. As the gathering was still continued, Talha radiallahu anhu entered into the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to that villager, look at that man that's entering the masjid at this time. He is the person that Allah is referring into this ayah. Fulfilled his obligation towards the deen of Allah. Subhanallah. What a degree. What a degree in Quran al -Karim from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a reminder for us. Brothers and sisters, this Talha, he died in the year 36 Hijri. And his death was unfortunately in that time when the Muslims were at each other's throats. The death of Uthman radiallahu anhu in fact, the murder of Uthman radiallahu The beginning of the fitna, the fitna that a lot of the companions said that this was the beginning of the fitna and now after this, there is no end to it until Isa alayhi salam comes and kills the Dajjal. This fitna now will continue. So at that time, when Uthman radiallahu anhu was murdered, and after his murder, there were a group of the Muslims who said, we want those people who murdered Uthman brought to justice. And there were others who also loved Uthman. But they were saying, look, at this moment in time, the Muslims are in disarray. We have to now bring this chaos into some sort of order. And then after that, we will seek revenge for Uthman. Because they all loved Uthman. Why did they love Uthman? Because the Prophet loved Uthman. And it led to two great armies and a battle. As a result of this battle, a lot of Muslims died. From amongst the people who was in that battle was Talha. Talha came to the battle. And he was amongst those people who wanted the blood of Uthman to be. And he avenged. So he came to the battle and he sided with those people. And then he met Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Ali spoke to him and said to him, do you not remember what the Prophet said about me? When he told him, he remembered. So he left the battlefield. He's leaving the battle. He's not raising his weapons to fight anybody. Marwan ibn Hakam fired an arrow. And the arrow hit Talha in his knee. And as a result of that, Talha died. That was the death of Talha. Anhu. How old was he? 64 years old. Brothers and sisters, Sayyidina Ali came out of the battlefield and he found Talha lying dead in the dirt. So he took him. And he wiped the dirt from his face. And then he says that the Prophet ﷺ told me that my neighbor in Jannah is Talha. Who were the children of Talha? What were their names? Yahya and Musa and Isa. Who was the wife of Talha? Um Kulthum, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Talha. The best, married in the best, lived amongst the best and died amongst the best.